All right. Here we go. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good whatever it is. It's August the 3rd, 2021. I don't know how many of you keep wanting to say 2020, but you know, well, we're, that's the past, right? 2021. And I love the fact that we are paradigm shifters. Let's take a deep breath into what that means to you personally right now. What does it mean for you to have gone through or possibly going through the shift? Well, we are a global community dedicated to shift and uplift the whole planet. How's that? And as of, I love it, Lynn. <laughs> we have 50 weeks straight. Next week will be our one year anniversary. There's, let's see, 1,140 people, and we keep growing and growing and growing because it's a global healing, a global thing. So for August, for our month of August, our um, topic is honoring the journey, honoring the journey. So, and I am so excited to have my partner in believing, Lynn Trancho. We've been partners in believing for, Lynn, I think it's been seven years. Mm. Yes. And if you don't have a partner in believing, it's for me, it's one of the things that keeps me grounded. We meet every Monday morning, we come together, partner in believing and moving forward. So um, Lynn is from Buffalo, New York, studied computer science at the University of Buffalo and is uh, the administrator for Vibrant Living Vibes Group. And one of the things that I love about Lynn is she's a licensed Unity teacher, and she's also widowed. So there's a spiritual component we're gonna be talking about today as well, and honoring the journey. So one of the, I just want, Lynn, is it okay if I talk about a moment in time where we were like- Of course. Yes. Okay. Well, yes. So my son Jody and I were traveling across country and we ended up um, in uh, Buffalo, New York and visited Lynn, stayed with Lynn, and we went to Niagara Falls. Imagine that, Niagara Falls. We didn't even go to Niagara Falls, just we went on a, the Maid of the Mist under the falls. And we and I've just, the moment in time, Lynn, that I remember was we were standing there with our raincoats on, the whole thing, and we said, let's see if we can see a rainbow. And you said, why not? I then said, maybe two rainbows. And then you said, how about three? How about yeah. three rainbows? <laughs> and we did. We did. And that's part of the... The journey when you have partners in believing who can see things the way you do and then manifest them. Yeah. So I'm going to turn this over to you and um, take it away, honoring the journey and uh, how that's been an important part of your life and continues. So here you go, Lynn. It's all yeah. you. So for me, a great way to honor the journey is through stories. It seems like Every week, a couple of uh, things come up with respect to stories. We have stories of who we are, who we want to be for ourselves, for others, and how we see the world. And stories are really important to connect with people to help you remember things better. People remember stories when they don't remember facts. And there's also other things to consider. Um, PBS, a, PB, a local PBS station in Buffalo has some really great programs. And this week I watched one, uh, the program is called Story in the Public Square. And Father James Martin said, arguments and debates close down minds, stories open minds up. And that's the reason that Jesus taught in, in parables. So I started my self-development journey, I'd say it's at least 30 years ago. What I used to do is I used to go to the self-help section of the bookstore. 
Um, and I would read uh, the back cover of a book. And if my stomach hurt, I bought the book because that's where my stress showed up. That's where my fear showed up, not my stress. My fear showed up in my stomach and I figured anything that scared me, I needed to read. So then I started attending uh, Unity. I started taking classes and I started teaching classes. And I really loved it when people got it. You know, that light bulb goes off and people see things differently and start doing things differently. So the Unity Worldwide Ministries had a, um, what they called the transformation experience. And part of that was to be working with uh, Gary Simmons, Reverend Dr. Grant, Gary Simmons, who I love. And uh, the title was to become an art and practice ambassador. So I did that and I loved it even more being in that coaching position. So I went out and I found uh, another um, more uh, global type of coaching. And I found Mary Morrissey and started coaching. And that's how I met, how I met Judy. So over the years, I have really taken all of these principles and started to live them. I became a licensed unity teacher. And it's really important to, to be able to not just uh, read about them, think about them. You have to actually move your feet. Because without moving your feet, you, you have the tendency of having a spiritual bypass. You might say, yeah, this is in divine order. And yet, sitting on the couch eating bonbons isn't going to make things happen. You have to get up and move your feet. And sitting on the couch and eating bonbons is creating a spiritual bypass, just expecting something to happen without doing anything. And um, it was, um, when was it? 2004, I bought my house with uh, the love of my life. And uh, marriage equality wasn't legal back then. So we worked for marriage equality and it became legal in 2011. Uh, and we got married. And a little bit before that, um, my spouse, Kathy, had um, been diagnosed with peritoneal cancer. So over the, the course of the time, we, we managed as best we could. We managed. We thrived in that time, we got married, and a year and a half later, she passed away. And if it wasn't for all of these spiritual principles and all of this, this um, grounding in spirit, in the infinite, in whatever, that situation would have been very, very different for me. I, I attended some grief classes at the local hospice, and some of the people there were, you know, it was six months since their spouse died and they still hadn't gone back to work and still were in this place of every day going through this, this grief. And it's not that I didn't experience the grief, it's that I, I allowed the grief to happen and to honor the relationship and honor where we were, where we be, what we became and, and to continue to move forward. So there's really two, in, in my eyes, there are two types of stories we can tell. We can tell our current story, and that really helps us know each other and helps people get to know each other. And yet it's a, it's a snapshot in time, and it's really limited in that way, and it really doesn't predict our future. So when we think about the story, we also wanna be honest about where we are and, and do it without judgment, because judgment just keeps you stuck in that negative aspect of something. So we want to learn from them without, again, doing a spiritual bypass. And the better way to tell our story, for me, is you can transform your life by rewriting your story. So think about it now. Um, if you're working with Judy, I know you have a vision. So think about the vision for your life and really step into that vision and be that person and think about who you are in that, in that vision. And then I would invite you to go back to certain periods of your life that doesn't, that happen that don't support where you wanna be now. 
And you can actually rewrite those moments. So go back and um, I invite you after this is over to think about it a little. I apologize, I seem to have a little bit of a frog in my throat. Um, and really think about one area of your life <coughs> and go back in time to a moment in time that didn't support where you wanna be. It supported where you are, didn't support where you wanna be and rewrite that moment. So, and you can, so can, yeah. you give, like, can you give me an exam example um, about like whenever I go back, it hurts too much to go back. And well, and, and that's where, important. yeah. Yeah, so tell me more. So about that's that. where you, you want to, to do a kind glance back on things and know that um, in the moment, everybody's always doing the best they can do, even if it doesn't seem like it. And in the um, Course in Miracles, uh, it says that every act is even either a, a expression of love or a call for love, no matter how unskilled. And it's the no matter how unskilled part that helped me uh, see things that happened to me without getting bogged down in that, in the, in the pain, so to speak. So if we can see every act is either a call for love or an expression of love, no matter how unskilled, I think that that can help take away that feeling of pain that something happened to me. And we can see it as more that it happened through me. So, so you sense? have like these really strong emotions that sometimes I find working with people that they're afraid to feel those strong emotions. Uh, the, and so they'll work harder and work harder not to feel them and to keep moving forward. Have you ever found that with, with yourself or any of your clients? Yeah, and that the more you avoid, um, the stronger it gets. Oh. So if you can see those emotions as just um, something that happened, if you can allow those emotions to, to work through you instead of getting stuck in you, it makes it easier to see things differently and be able to do things differently. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, yeah. And so I, I, I didn't mean to interrupt it. Um, it, it, it is, it's honoring that part of the story, isn't it? Definitely it is honoring the story without, um, without getting stuck in it. And that's another thing you can do is there are times like even last year when everything seemed to be, everything was shutting down, everything was going on. And another thing that you can do is to have a pity party and just make sure you put an end to the pity party so it doesn't last. So last year I was just, you know, it was last year, it was the middle of the pandemic and it was just, I was really feeling sorry for myself. And I said, okay, I am going to spend today and have a pity party for myself. Whatever happens, happens. If I cry, if I whatever, I'm gonna really feel sorry for myself today. And when I go to sleep tonight, I am going to go beyond it. So if you can give yourself a pity party with, with a specific end date, then you allow those feelings to happen without them getting bogged down inside of you. I love, so, love that. So a pity party with an end date. Yes, you always want to have an end date to your pity party. Yes, because otherwise, if you don't, what happens? It, it escalates? Well, you just get stuck in it and you don't really move forward. Okay, awesome. That is yeah. a great tool. So, wow, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, so um, getting back to the trend, rewriting your story. And I do this in my um, The Art of Quantum Living. As you go back to those moments first you step into who you want to be you could step into your vision and go back to those moments that you can rewrite because they don't support where you want to be now 
And it's not denying the moments happen. It's just rewriting them to support you where you want to be. You can even go so far as to uh, rewrite your parents' story. Who would your parents have to be to raise the you that you want to be? And you can even have your grandparents rewrite their story to be the parents that supported your parents in the new story. Um, so, and the reason that this works is that our subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between what we tell it and what's real. Our subconscious mind is our emotional mind and it just accepts everything that we tell it. So you can go through and rewrote those, rewrite those moments in time to support who you are becoming, who you want to be. And that's really a very strong, uh, powerful, transformative process. So anybody that's willing, that's, that's listening to this, I invite you to take a moment to just think about that vision of who you have come here to be and step into being that person. And then go back in time to certain moments in time that could be rewritten to more support who you are in this new vision and just rewrite those and, and go back, pick a couple, go back as far as, as you can and just rewrite those. And as you rewrite them, have fun with them. And uh, cause the universe loves fun. So you wanna have fun with them, be creative and really stay open to the possibilities. And then once you do that, just spend some time with them, maybe a half hour or so, maybe an hour and just see what comes to you and see how you can change those memories to support your vision and who you've come here to be. And if you're brave enough, I would even invite you to put in the paradigm shifter, some of the re, rewritten moments in your life to support who you have come here to be now. And again, the reason this works is your subconscious really doesn't know the difference between what you tell it and what is real. Wow. So we've collectively, as a global community, have gone through and are sometimes what in the middle of um, whatever it is that's going on out there. Um, do you find that it's easy or could you rewrite as it goes on? Or is that denying the facts or how, how would you use that tool of um, rewriting the story um, in the middle of it without having it be a spiritual bypass? I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, so you, you don't want to deny the facts. The facts are the facts. So when you, go, when you rewrite it, you rewrite it to what you would love to happen. And um, I, I'm assuming that every, uh, most of the people in your group know about the law of attraction. The law of attraction is actually the secondary law. It's the law of vibration. So you wanna get into that vibration of being that person. And it doesn't really change the facts. It changes who you are being in the moment. So um, instead of being angry about having to do something, you can be joyful about the opportunity to, to do it differently, the opportunity to be who you are and uh, be a different person to help other people see things differently too. So it really doesn't change the facts, but you don't want to allow that the facts to keep you in this negative place. Um, does that make sense? Yes, yeah, yes. And um, I, I know we, we start out with, <laughs> I forgot to have you flip, pray us in, Lynn. Well, you can pray us out. But, uh, <laughs> uh, we start off with gratitudes and wins. How important are the, are, um, the wins after you've gone, re rewritten it? You know, gratitudes and wins are you yes. know, the rocket fuel, I think. Yeah. Gratitude, gratitude is, is everything to be grateful in all things and not just grateful for is 
being grateful for something that's already happened. If you can be grateful in all things, then you're in a different place so that you, you see the good. Because uh, I'm sure that everybody has been in a place where something has happened and we, we would have preferred it not happen. And yet at the end, we realize that it's the best thing that could have happened to us. So when you're in that state of gratitude, you can see the blessing in it. And then finding something that you're proud of or a win to celebrate really reinforces that. Because even, even people that, even when you're, you're able to feel grateful for something, a lot of times we have a hard time being proud about or to celebrate wins that we've had. And those also help to kind of ground and reinforce all of that, that gratitude and just puts you in a whole new place of seeing the world from a, a different place and being able to be in the world and not be uh, stuck in circumstance. Because we don't want to be, we don't want to deny our circumstances, but we don't want the circumstances to control who we're being at the same time. Yeah. Do you have an example of how you've had, how you have been grateful in a situation? Um, I think that probably uh, one of the best ones was when Kathy went into hospice um, near the end of her life. And I, I'm a fairly strong introvert. So I was just happy being there, being by myself, sitting at her side. And I can remember looking out the door and my minister was walking down the hall and it's like, gee, what's she doing here? And it's like, and then it's like, no, she's here to support me. So, you know, I went from this place of, man, what's she doing here? This is my space to, she's here to support me. And then along the way, my cousin kept on texting me, uh, do you need anything? Do you need anything? And I'd say, no, I'm fine. No, I'm fine. No, I'm fine. And then it occurred to me that she wanted to come visit. So I said to her, I'm fine. If you want to come visit, feel free. And within seconds later, she said, oh, thank you. Can I bring Patty, which is her sister? And it's like, of course. So what it did for me in that moment of being in that place and honoring Kathy's life, it opened me up to other people and allowing uh, myself to share other people in the moment and allowing people in that space of supporting me in the moment too. Because it, it is really easy for me to just be by myself and be happy by myself. And what it really taught me in that moment was to allow other people to support me and to be in the process with me. Wow. Wow. What a journey you've been on. Yeah. What, what a journey um, everybody's been on. And... Uh, yeah, well, and, and we honor your journey, Lynn, and it, it's, it's having the courage to talk about the journey as well. Because in the talking about it, do you find that you're, you allow other people to start healing from resentment, regret, and all that? Yeah, and, and that's one of the big benefits of sharing your journey is people hear your story, they identify it with it, and they, they can learn from it. And um, I think that's the best thing is, is that when you share your story, people learn, know you better and can even learn from your story and see where parts of their story that are similar, they can see those parts differently. Wow, well, thank you so much. This has been so, it's such a little gold nugget. So writing down gold nugget, gold nugget, you know, rewriting your story, you know, the spiritual bypass. And um, I love the fact that you said, throw yourself a pity party. Yes. And date. <laughs> and, and date. And date, yeah. Oh, I think I'm going to throw myself one this afternoon. <laughs> yeah. You know, for me, one of the most difficult for me is to allow myself to to go down that route. You know, that's my past. I don't want to deal with it. So that sounds um, that sounds really 
like a great tool. Thank you so much. So what we want to do now is to honor you for sharing your journey with us in this this um, yeah August 2021. And what would you love to have us hold for you on your next phase of your journey? What would you love, Lynn? Um, I would just love for you to hold for me that I um, stay open and maybe even hold for me that I, um, this just occur occurred to me and that's that's really the way things happen is when when somebody opens a possibility for you, you allow something to come in. So uh, what just occurred to me is for you to hold for me that I allow this expansive beingness that I have, that I share it with others. Because like I said, I am very comfortable being alone. So if you could just hold for me that I share this, uh, go out in the world and share this more with other people. Oh, thank you. Well, you just did <laughs> yeah. on your YouTube channel. I love it. Well, so with that, uh, one of the things that Lynn and I always do with our partners in believing, we pray. I This is like a partner believing little tool. When you find that partner, you know, we pray in, we pray us in before we start. Then we have our talk and then we pray us out. So would you love, would you please pray us out of, um, and our paradigm shifters out of this August 3rd, 2021, Lynn? Yeah, so uh, sweet and loving spirit, as we go for this day, this week, this month, this year, this decade, this lifetime, let us see ourselves and see each other in the magnificent story that we are. And let us just bring our story to the world and share it with the world in ways that will help other people become better versions of themselves. And so it is. Amen. Oh, yes. All right, here it comes. <laughs> All around the world. Thank you so much. Thank Lynn. you. Yeah. All right. That was fun. <laughs>